What happens when a third of a major city loses electricity suddenly and there are hundreds of autonomous vehicles on the road? Well, we just found out in San Francisco a couple of days back. At the same time, Tesla did not do anything like that. Now, why did that happen and what went wrong technically? Let's discuss about that in this video. Now, as somebody who has sat in both Waymo and Tesla in San Francisco, I like both the companies a lot, but there's a lot of discussion going on about why Waymo's technology is bad or, you know, vibe coding part and, you know, people are just making anything up. Waymo has given a clarification in the blog post, which I want to discuss in detail as much as we could because the blog does not contain a lot of technical information but I would try to make sense of it and extrapolate some of the information that I can gather. So this is a blog post which is also there in the link in the description is there but this is a blog post which states the reason why Waymo went down. So a little bit of backstory about this what happened was the PG&E company which is in charge of delivering electricity I'm assuming to most of San Francisco actually had an outage right so AWS is not the only system that has went down this year neither is cloudflare it's actually an electricity grid system as well so it impacted a good chunk of san francisco city which also resulted in electricity of the signals going out the traffic signals which are there now generally this is fine but san francisco had to send manual policemen traffic police to divert the traffic manually right if the signals are not working obviously you need somebody to mediate traffic and that can be done by a human now coming back to the blog post in this short post which is not you know containing a lot of information it says that Waymo did traverse more than 7,000 dark signals on Saturday which is the day when the outage happened it also said that while the Waymo driver is designed to handle the dark traffic signals as a four-way stop it may occasionally request a confirmation check to ensure it makes the safest choice so this is where what went wrong right so First of all, this Waymo driver is actually an AI system. It's not like a real human. That is what Waymo calls its systems like Waymo driver. Now, what they're saying here is that if it's a dark traffic signal, which is basically like no traffic signal is on at either of the ends, it considers that that as a four-way stop. They're saying that sometimes it may request for a confirmation from the back end, which is basically a human support, a human system where maybe like a bunch of people are sitting and they are you know, checking if the rides are going okay. One thing which you might also be able to see in my video where I show like Waymo system, you might be able to see that at any point in Waymo, you can request for help, right? Where an operator would automatically be connected to your ride. And in some cases, it's also possible to just hand over your ride to operator in case Waymo gets stuck somewhere. In fact, as a matter of fact, this happened with me in San Francisco where I was stuck in a Waymo at an intersection for about 30 minutes and then somebody actually had to take control and get me out of there, right? And it was my first Waymo ride and that happened. I tweeted about that as well. So this is the original video which I had, which for some reason is not playing on X now. And this is what happened. So soon after that. So it took my Waymo actually got stuck on this intersection and it just did not cross at all because there was some traffic and you know, it just not divert and somebody had to like, you see the support button, I had to press that and somebody then rescued the ride. Now what Google is says that it may occasionally request a confirmation check, but chances are that it's doing very, very often, right? So what happened was that when all the signals went down, Google basically dosed themselves, which is denial of service because Waymo started producing too much traffic for confirmation to the human support and there were not much available human support to divert all the traffic right so that resulted in all the Waymo rides getting frozen on the roads now in software development this is a very typical edge case right where you just did not consider that all the signals will fail and this is primarily the only reason Tesla also did not fail is because they might have considered that edge case or they might have not baked in this fail safe that okay if all the four red lights are not functional, you don't have to fall back to human support. So Waymo effectively dosed themselves their own DDoS, I would say, like not even DOS. They just distributed denial of service attack did themselves by mistake because of a condition of an edge case that happened. And of course, Waymo has been here for many, many years now. So, you know, this is probably some legacy code which was done once and then nobody bothered to check if what happens if this happens, right? So they are taking up measures. They are saying that, you know, we are updating software, we are making sure none of this happens again. And to be fair, it's fine, right? Because again, with software, nothing harmful, hope thankfully happened. There were no accidents. There was nothing like Waymo's did not just start to race into each other. So no weird stuff started happening. It was just the simplest outcome that could be that Waymo 
almost just did not move at all, which obviously caused some problems. But because these are like San Francisco roads and the speeds are anywhere not super high, it was all good and fair. Well, that's what happened with San Francisco. And if you found this breakdown useful, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Do let me know in the comments what do you think. That's all for this video. And I will see you in the next one very soon. Mm -hmm.